So I've been wanting to see and photograph a SpaceX rocket launch for myself in person ever since they landed their first Falcon 9 booster back in December of 2015. So almost eight years ago, I sat down here to film some videos. I quickly pulled up Twitter to check out what's going on. And I see this tweet from SpaceX. All systems and weather are looking good for tomorrow's Falcon Heavy launch of the USS F-67 mission from Florida. This was tweeted at 428 and it is currently 606 here in Philadelphia. Now, this is the first time that I'm hearing about this launch of Falcon Heavy. It happens tomorrow, January 14th at 5.55 p.m. And currently, as of filming this video, it is January 13th at 6.10 p.m. So that means that I have a little under 24 hours to make it from Philadelphia down to Florida by car. And I think we can make it. All right, so we made it down here to Florida. We are currently on Playa Linda Beach to watch the Falcon Heavy launch. As we were coming down and we went through Jacksonville, I checked Twitter and saw that SpaceX actually scrubbed the launch. We were on pace to make it down here on time. We we're gonna be about two hours early for the launch. It would have been perfect, but we ended up staying an extra day. So today isn't Saturday, today is Sunday. We're trying to scope the area out, find the best place to take a photo of this rocket. And after having done some research, kind of based on how people are photographing the rocket, different exposure settings, different angles, it's kind of got me a little bit worried because every time that you find yourself doing something different in photography, whether it's portraits, whether it's real estate, whether it's architecture, architecture, interiors, and now photographing rockets, it's always very different. All right, so the sun is setting fast. It currently is 456, which means we have exactly one hour until launch time. We finally found the spot that we're going to stand to watch and photograph the launch. We're on the second closest boardwalk. The first closest boardwalk is filled with other photographers and probably has been filled since earlier this morning, but we've got a really good vantage point with some trees in the foreground that should complement the rocket really well. It's kind of tough because I want to be able to get both photos and a video of the rocket launch. So I think what my plan is, is to put my 70 to 200 on my a1 here that I'm shooting with on now and then I'm gonna have an a7 III with my 24 to 70 just behind me capturing a wider angle shot of the actual rocket taking off so that's my game plan now let's go to the actual rocket launch T minus 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Engine full power. There it goes. And lift off of USSF 67. Go Falcon Heavy. Go Space Oh Force. my god. Listen. Oh. Listen. Booster chamber pressures are nominal. the grumbling from the engine i actually captured that clip of me my buddy paul and everybody else we were kind of watching the launch with just with a gopro i just kind of set it up over on the railing and the audio was from the gopro as well i mean the rocket was so loud so powerful it shook the entire ground it really was an awesome experience but of course you saw me standing up there on the railing capturing photos so i now want to share with you the photos and some of the other content that i captured around the falcon heavy launch now i know people are going to ask did I fly my drone because this is primarily a drone YouTube channel. Yes, I did, but I didn't fly it during the launch. If you look at the airspace, there really is just no good way to get a close shot of the actual Falcon Heavy itself, of the rocket itself. There's also no drone signs all over the place. So the only spot I was really able to fly my drone was right in Titusville over the water. I got some cool sunset video, some cool sunset photographs as well, but that was pretty much the extent of the drone flying that I did 
on the strip. Now, remember, we were set up on that second boardwalk back, so we had a little bit of greenery in between us and the rocket, and I thought that that would make a really good opportunity to kind of use the trees and the shrubs as a foreground element and then have the rocket looming in the background. So that's kind of the first thing I did once I showed up. I basically just handheld my camera, put it right up to my eye, and then photographed it. And you'll notice that at that height, it cuts off the bottom like ever so slightly. Also, it was very hazy. So even though this is a 50 megapixel image, that rocket that is super far away, I think we we're like 3.8 miles away, is kind of hazy and kind of blurry because of the heat coming off of the rocket itself. But luckily, that did end up simmering down as we kind of moved towards the launch. So the reason that I was standing up on the railing is so I could get just a little bit more height to pop up over those branches, to pop up over whatever is here in front of me and get a nice clean shot of the rocket actually launching. From there, I kind of moved in and just capturing some quick sunset shots. But honestly, this was kind of the last thing on my mind because the rocket was about to take off. So I put my camera into like the low burst shooting mode and basically once the rocket started taking off, I just let it fly. So if we go through here and actually click through the photographs, it literally is a carousel of just nothing but the rocket taking off right? This was probably the number one thing I absolutely wanted to capture. And you'll notice, I'll kind of go back here, that standing up and giving myself that extra height allowed me to actually see the entire rocket. Wow, look at that when we zoom all the way in. So again, this is the Sony A1, the 70 to 200 zoomed all the way into 200 millimeters. And then this is zoomed in, of course, uh, to, I guess, what would this be? However many percent. We're zoomed in very far here on the actual computer. And we were using the A1. So this is a 50 megapixel image, but it's kind of crazy to think that at 200 millimeters, I was technically shooting wide. Like this is a wide angle shot from again, about 3.8 miles away. So the first thing that I did was pretty much just burst off a bunch of photos of the actual launch itself. You'll see the rocket going up high into the sky. I kind of tried to track it, but also leave the bottom or the ground in the shots. So we kind of have that smoke billowing. Um, and you'll notice that, you know, the rocket is lighting up the entire sky from here. I started to kind of lose the rocket as well as the ground itself. So I decided to kind of pull my focal length back and then try to still capture the rocket flying as well as the foreground there. It's also crazy. I mean, these settings, again, this was just after the sunset. And if we look at the exposure settings. My ISO is at 250. My focal length here was at 110. My aperture was f 2.8 and my shutter speed was 1 800th of a second, which is kind of crazy to think for how late we were actually ca actually capturing these photographs. So nonetheless, I really enjoyed these launch photographs here. I pretty much kept every single one of these photos because I ended up exporting them and turning them into kind of like a time lapse boomerang type thing where the rocket would take off and then land and then take off and then land. That was pretty cool. Um, and I was able to achieve such a stable shot by actually running it through After Effects or Stabilization and then running it through another round of Warp Stabilizer directly in Final Cut Pro. Because if we go back to the very first photograph here, we kind of click through. I was shaky. I was all over the place. Honestly, it was just so exciting. My legs were shaking because I was standing up on a railing and because it was so exciting to watch. But again, I took out a lot of this shake afterwards when I was actually able to stabilize the clip. Also, just look down at the... Uh, at the film strip here and kind of as I scroll through watch the rocket go up and take off that is so cool and so satisfying to see okay so of course those are my launch photographs there right the actual uh the actual rocket flying up into the sky the falcon heavy and then from there is when I jumped down off of the railing I kind of looked back at the photos it was like wow I got it now let me see what else I can get so I captured these two photos of the falcon heavy flying through the sky again these were captured at 200 millimeters so I'm zoomed all the way in here but with 50 megapixels we can zoom super far in and still get some pretty good detail of the rocket itself next time I definitely need to invest in bringing like a 600 millimeter lens or something like that because while 200 millimeters is great for again those wide shots, which is crazy to say 600 would get me like right up on the rocket and including 50 megapixels, it would just be incredibly sharp. So that would be pretty cool. These two shots I really enjoy just because it's nothing but sky and the actual rocket and kind of like that smoke trail that it's leaving behind it. But these still personally aren't my favorite shots. So moving on, uh, this is kind of like the smoke that was left behind by the rocket. The rocket is of course kind of over here on the left side and the sun was just hitting the cloud in such an interesting way that made it pop. Like it was pure orange orange and pure yellow. That was pretty cool to kind of see that trailing behind the rocket itself. Now from here, Falcon Heavy, of course, has three different boosters, the main booster and then the two side boosters. And those two side boosters actually detach from the rocket and then come down and land. So as we kind of go through and look at these next photographs here, we zoom way in. 
you'll see that the two rockets actually end up separating and they end up coming off of the main the main rocket itself to then come down and land now this was at 93 millimeters right here so i wasn't zoomed all the way in but at this point i actually didn't even know that stage separation had happened so i was trying to get this wide angle shot of the entire trail of smoke throughout the sky i did that for a little bit until i heard someone yell behind me like hey the stages have separated and then i finally zoomed in to 200 millimeters and that's when you can kind of start to see these two little rockets uh, fluttering there in the air and then that is the main booster right there so kind of skimming through these photos again it was just kind of shooting burst to try and capture the uh, boosters you know doing their thing zooming in you can kind of start to see that they're separating away from the smoke but moving on here this is where they start to really show themselves like these photographs right here are some of my favorite this one actually might be my favorite because of the smoke that's coming off of that main booster and then you have the two side boosters hovering there and you can almost see them right you can pick out that detail like you can see the black base the white body and of course the uh fire underneath right from the actual rocket itself from the booster and then you've also got these smoke trails coming from either side so overall perfect Personally, I think that this is one of my favorite captures. Maybe that one is. It's tough. I mean, these three are so similar, but actually that one might be better just because they're centered more here and you have a little bit more drama uh, with the smoke coming off of the actual boosters themselves. Moving on from there, those are pretty much the last usable photos I captured. The rest were just for like a keepsake, like a memory to remember that I was there. So the boosters were kind of coming down. That's another cool shot of the actual cloud itself in the sky. These ones I actually don't think I edited yet. I don't think I actually plan on editing them because again, they're just kind of like showing the actual boosters landing. Actually, that one is pretty sharp. That one looks pretty cool. I hadn't noticed uh, that you can actually zoom in and see the booster itself, but there we have it. That was my very first time capturing a SpaceX rocket launch, and what better rocket to see for the first time than Falcon Heavy. There's a lot happening with SpaceX, both between Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship, which is kind of coming up on its first orbital launch. This is some of my favorite photography that I've found myself doing over the past couple of months probably because it's so different and so unique so i think i'm going to invest in some new gear try and go out and make some more launches even though i live so far away because this is a ton of fun so if you want to come on with me make sure to subscribe to the channel here i'll definitely be vlogging my experience as i go down there and capture some more photos and find some new spots to actually photograph these launches from if you guys want to uh you know download any of these photos i really don't mind at all they're kind of like my first crack my first attempt so if you ever wanted to like download one just let me know i'll leave a dropbox link maybe in the description with some of these photographs and yeah thanks again for watching so much stay tuned for the next vlog and as always i'll talk to you later peace